In the 2014 film Interstellar, Christopher Nolan captivates audiences with stunningly accurate scientific imagery never before seen in mainstream cinema. In particular, the black hole in Interstellar took both the film community as well as the scientific community by surprise due to its sheer elegance and mystery. Part of this was because of the large efforts to make it as scientifically accurate as possible with respect to Einstein's general theory of relativity. However, though the far majority of what we see in the movie is accurate, there are some inaccuracies which I'll be addressing within this video. Number 1. Gargantua's Field of View When the Endurance crew are trying to figure out how they're going to make it to Miller's planet, Cooper says, Okay. Here's Gargantua, here's Miller's planet. Instead of taking the Endurance into orbit around Miller's planet, which would conserve fuel but we would lose a lot of time, what if we, we take a wider orbit around Gargantua, parallel with Miller's planet, outside of this time shift to here? The logic behind this idea is that the crew want to spend as little time as possible within the proximity of Miller's planet. Keep in mind that one hour on Miller's planet represents seven years on Earth since it's so close to Gargantua's massive gravitational pull. So a reasonable orbit that will keep the endurance out of Miller's intense time shift would be approximately 5 Gargantua radii away from Gargantua, with one radii being approximately the distance of 150 million kilometers, or about the distance from the Earth to the Sun. So with an orbit of 5 Gargantua radii, that means that the distance is almost the same as our Sun all the way out to Jupiter's orbit. At this distance away from Gargantua, in the movie it only takes up approximately 2.5 degrees in the night sky, which is about 5 times the size of the full moon. In reality, due to the incredible size of Gargantua, it should have taken up a staggering 50 degrees of the night sky, looking somewhat like this. Number 2. Gargantua Spin Throughout the movie, we see the black hole's shadow as a bit of a circle moves slightly to the right. This is actually pretty inaccurate when you realize that Gargantua required an incredibly fast spin for the dramatic time dilation on Miller's planet to occur. During the production of Interstellar, Christopher Nolan recruited American theoretical physicist Kip Thorne to ensure that much of the film is as scientifically accurate as possible. When Christopher Nolan told Kip Thorne that he wanted every hour on Miller's planet to last seven years on Earth and that it was non-negotiable, Kip Thorne discovered through Einstein's relativistic equations that this magnitude of time dilation was only possible if Miller's planet was close enough to Gargantua without being pulled in. However, Gargantua also had to be spinning obscenely fast, almost as fast as a theoretical maximum spin of a black hole, which is about the speed of light. So while the black hole in the movie looks like a non-spinning black hole, also known as a Schwarzschild black hole, it should have looked more like a spinning black hole, which is known as a Kerr black hole. Number 3. Gargantua's Doppler and Gravitational Shift In the movie, Gargantua lacks two essential concepts that dramatically change the way the black hole is perceived by the observer. For now, we can ignore the gravitational shift and focus more on the Doppler shift. This principle explains how the energy of a wave, whether it be a light wave or a sound wave, changes based on whether the wave was moving when it was emitted. For example, if a stationary laser is emitting a green beam, which turns out to be right in the middle of the visible light spectrum, the observer would see the color green. However, if the laser starts moving at half the speed of light towards the observer, the density of the electromagnetic waves, which is the more accurate name for visible light, will increase thereby making it seem more energetic which changes the color to one with more energy, such as blue. The same logic applies for a laser emitting green light while moving away from the observer at half the speed of light. 
The density of the electromagnetic waves reaching the observer is less, which means it contains less energy and would appear lower on the visible light spectrum. In this case, the observer would see the color red since it has less energy than green. So let's go back to interstellar. The accretion disk that spins around Gargantua has matter that spins around it at approximately half the speed of light. According to the scientific paper written by the same members who had a large role in creating and animating Gargantua, it should be slightly bluish on the side that is moving towards the observer and more of a reddish tint on the part of the accretion disk that moves away from the observer. In addition, since the side moving towards us has more energy, it should also be brighter. And naturally, the reddish side of the accretion disk that is moving away from us should also be dimmer. This is my representation of what it should look like. Number 4. Activity near a black hole. This one's a bit nitpicky, but it goes over a pretty big misconception. When discussing which planet the crew should go to after the failure of Miller's planet, Amelia Brand says this. Murphy's Law. Whatever can happen, will happen. Accident is the first building block of evolution, but when you're orbiting a black hole, not enough can happen. It, it sucks in asteroids and comets, other events which would otherwise reach you. We need to go further afield. This addresses a big misconception about black holes that Brand falsely believed. Lots of people think that black holes devour anything that enters within its vicinity, kind of like a celestial vacuum cleaner. But that couldn't be further from the truth. Brand believes that the closer you go towards a black hole, the less celestial objects you'll encounter because a black hole would be devouring everything in sight. In reality, it's actually insanely rare that celestial objects fall into a black hole. The far majority of the time, the celestial objects being tugged by the black hole's strong gravity have lots of angular momentum, and it's incredibly uncommon that the object falls right into the gravitational well. So instead of the area around a black hole being a dead zone where nothing orbits like Bran argues, it's actually filled with plenty of celestial objects that will probably orbit the black hole indefinitely or until another source of gravitation intervenes. Christopher Nolan knows that Bran's arguments were wrong, but chose to include it anyway perhaps to try to show that no one is perfect, not even a scientist. Number 5. Neutron Star Slingshot In this scene, Cooper says, Paul. Um, look, I, I could swing around that neutron star to decelerate. No, 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 it's not that. It's time. The gravity on that. What Cooper wants to do is to use a neutron star to help slow down the endurance with the help of what is called a gravitational slingshot maneuver. In reality, doing so would completely tear the crew as well as the spaceship apart due to the strong gravitational forces. But before we get into that, let's discuss why the crew would use a gravitational slingshot. During their descent towards Miller's planet, the gravitational force of Gargantua pulls them so strongly that by the time they would reach Miller's planet, they would be going a quarter times the speed of light more than Miller's planet, which would make it almost impossible to land. The crew would need to slow down by a quarter of the speed of light. In this case, Cooper wants to use a neutron star to help slow down a ranger. By passing by the neutron star at just the right time, Cooper can use the force of its gravity to help slow down the speed of the ranger so they would reach a suitable speed to land on Miller's planet. Where they run into some issues is the fact that since they're traveling so fast, they would have to get pretty uncomfortably close to the neutron star in order to achieve that. In fact, the insane tidal gravity forces would tear apart both the spaceship and the crew. In order for this maneuver to work without being shredded by gravity, they would need a deflector with just as much gravitational force, but just with a wider diameter so that the gravity is more gentle per se. In the case of Interstellar, a 10 km wide black hole, which would be identified as an intermediate mass black hole, would be perfect for this maneuver. Anyway guys, I hope you liked the video. It was actually quite the beast to make, it took about 1500 hours to render and produce and everything. If you don't mind smashing the like button or doing whatever, I don't care. That would be much appreciated and stay tuned for the next video. Peace.